as you can tell, a theme across all of our shows today is brewing in Africa. And taking us through the origins of SAB beer is Kate Jones. Now, she's a master brewer and a SAB trade brewer for Chamdor. Uh, thanks for joining us. Chamdor, there we go. Thank thanks, thanks for joining thanks us, very Kate. Much. Great for you inviting me. Uh, Thank you. Many people might think that this is a bar, but perhaps uh, an indicator of Puza <laughs> Thursday, which not many people will agree with. Puza Thursday. Mm -hmm. But it's let's touch on you being a master brewer. Yeah. How long have you been in the industry for? I've been in brewing for 30 years now. Um, actually, 31, gosh. Um, and I've been with SAB for coming up 14 years. Sure. So I was brewing mostly in the UK before I came out here. So tell us, what, what do we need to do to make a beer? Well, it's all about the raw materials. I mean, <coughs> all beer is brewed the same everywhere around the world, um, from craft brewing, I believe you had a craft brewer in here earlier, yeah. um, to, to major internationals like SAB. And it's all about the raw materials. So um, water. Oh, which is in my glass here mm, Which today. is in your glass. <laughs> um, beer is 92% water, okay, which is one of the reasons why it's so good for you. <laughs> you know you're supposed to drink something like two and a half litres of water a day. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying all of it in beer format, but a, a couple's not going to hurt. And the flavours, a lot of the flavours come from the malted barley. Okay, so we, we do have the ingredients here. Perhaps if you could walk us through them. Yeah, um, so this is a pale malted barley. I mean, you can try that. It's got beautiful flavours on it. How does it smell? What does it taste? What does this do? Just have a little, little, little taste of it, a little chomp of it. Look, a it's good chomp. for you. It's good for you. Go this on, is on it. camera, so yeah. if anything happens to no, me... No, nothing, nothing bad's <laughs> going to happen to you. So Very if you taste crunchy. that, yeah, it's crunchy, it's friable, um, there's sweet sugars in there. Um, you're getting nice warm malt kind of flavors and this is the basis of beer and the sugars are extracted from the malted barley um, of which there are many types of malted barley we've got a couple more here mm -hmm. there's a crystal malt and I don't know if you can see this one this is um, a black malt and there are many many different types of malted barley that brewers produce and this is one of the ways that you can make different beers with different flavors and different attributes different colors and aromas from very very pale light golden lagers to rich, dark stouts and porters. What are the typical ingredients that are probably unique to South African beers? These are the main ingredients that, that we use. So we use our um, malted barley. Mm -hmm. We also use um, May sugars. A firm favorite across many South African households. Absolutely, absolutely. And May, we, we ex extract the sugars from, from um, the May syrups and they're added to the mix. So um, <coughs> we grind the malted barley into like a porridge we extract all the flavours, colours and aromas from it and there's some beautiful flavours. If you try that one, that's really burnt and dark and you'll see where those porters and stouts get their flavours. So we extract all the goodness out of the malted barley and then basically we um, boil it up with the maize sugars and with our hops. And it is hop growing harvest time, mm -hmm. which has just been going on in George. Where does this, oh, George usually? George, yes. Anyone um, else in South Africa with this course? No, this is not an indigenous plant to South Africa. Um, it's a remarkable plant. It's the fastest growing plant in the world. Where does it originate from? Um, mostly in the Northern Hemisphere, in the hedgerows across, across Europe. Uh, and the great hop growing regions are at 45 degrees latitude. Mm. So the classic European regions, um, Czech Republic, Germany, UK, and also across the North America. And then the southern 45 degree, Australia and New Zealand. George is at 35 degrees south. So we've had a lot of, a lot of difficulties in cultivating um, varieties that can cope with our climate. One of the main problems being is that our daylight hours are too short compared to the UK, you know, where it's light at four o'clock in the morning, gets dark at 10 o'clock at night. So our, our daylight hours are too short. Um, so our um, wonderful people in our hop farms have developed our own unique South African varieties like Southern Promise, Southern Star, Southern Dawn, Southern Aroma, Southern Passion. Um, I believe this is Southern Star. And this gives unique characteristics to beer. <coughs> what kind if of you open color that, you no, not at all color. Can you see those little yellow, if we lift like, it up, maybe like pollen there? Shot of that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see that. The pollen there. Um, those are lupulin glands, and if you crunch that and rub that in your hands, let's do that. Oh, let's experiment, yeah? It'll feel kind of resinous, kind of tacky. Give it a good, good rub and then a smell. Very sharp. Very sharp. Kind of. Uh, and, and the use of hops in brewing is a little bit like um, the use of herbs and spices in cooking. A small amount goes a long way. Mm. For an example, in one of our big breweries, we would use something like 40 tonnes of malted barley 
and 12 kilos of hops. So it's like chilies and spices. And what hops give to beer, the unique characteristic of beer, is the bitterness, the taste that you get right at the back of your palate when you swallow the beer. Mm. So to appreciate a beer fully, you have to swallow it. You can't do the wine drinking, spit, swirl, it, spit out. it out. You've, you've, you've got to taste the whole thing. And also when you smelt and rub there, there's some nice spicy um, herby kind of um, aromas coming off. So hops will contribute both bitterness and aroma to beer. And some of our newer varieties, like Southern Passion, they've got wonderful, wonderful flavours. Mm. Like it says, it's a passion fruit. So it gives passion fruit notes, notes and lychee notes to the beer. You've been in the game for a long time to be able to that sounds distinguish quite rude, that. <laughs> the differences uh, be between all of these ingredients here. But the training process, uh, I'm sure you take care of a, a few new entrants into the market who want to develop the skill. Um, yeah, look, to get to a master brewer level, um, you go through um, a diploma level. So you will do like an apprenticeship mm. and you'll do your uh, diploma of brewing through the Institute of Brewing and Distilling. Um, and then the master brewer is looking for you to demonstrate experience, that you've got practical experience in brewing. And it will generally take about 10 years to, to qualify as a, as a master brewer. Any particular nuances uh, in the South African market versus uh, the UK? Well, it's, um, the way that the taverns and pubs are set up is obviously extremely, extremely different um, from the UK. And also, um, I would say the South African market is, is relatively conservative when it comes to beer. Mm. They kind of like their lager styles of beer. I mean, if you travel across Europe, you can have a different style of beer every single day of the year. And there's some wonderful, huge different variety. So the South African market has been really quite conservative, um, lager styles. But with the emergence of craft brewing, uh, which is a fantastic thing, mm. um, we're starting to see different styles and people appreciating different values in beer. Yes, lagers are a great beer, um, but they're now exploring Indian pale ales and uh, dunkles and those kind of things. So we're seeing this huge emergence of craft brewing, which is just great for beer as an industry. Indeed. Because people are a lot more interested in beer.